Hi everyone. In this video, we'll talk about the sodium reabsorption in the distal tubule and the collecting duct. The distal tubule and the collecting duct reabsorbs about 5 to 7 percent of the filtered sodium chloride. The two parts of the distal tubule include the early distal tubule and the late distal tubule. Early distal tubule is continuous with the thick ascending limb of loop of Henle and so it is functionally identical to the thick ascending limb. It reabsorbs sodium chloride and calcium and is impermeable to water. The late distal tubule shows similarity with the cortical collecting duct and sodium and water reabsorption in this part of the nephron is regulated by the hormones. In the early distal tubule, sodium reabsorption occurs by active reabsorption of both sodium and chloride occurs. The sodium potassium ATPS pump present in the basolateral membrane maintains a low sodium concentration inside the cell which favors the diffusion of sodium into the cell from the lumen. Now the sodium movement from the lumen into the cell is via the sodium chloride symporter which is present on the epical membrane. This moves sodium and chloride from the lumen into the cell. The sodium which has entered the cell moves out of the cell through the sodium potassium ATPS pump which is present on the basolateral membrane. Chloride which has diffused into the cell moves out into the uh, bloodstream or into the interstitium through the chloride channel which is present on the basolateral membrane. This segment of the distal tubule is impermeable to water and causes the dilution of the tubular fluid as solute is reabsorbed without water reabsorption. So this segment of the distal tubule is also called as the dilutant segment. The luminal sodium chloride co-transporter can be blocked by a group of drugs and uh, this will inhibit the sodium and chloride transport from the tubular lumen into the cell. And the result is diuresis and these groups of drugs are called as thiazide diuretics which are used to treat uh, hypertension and uh, heart failure. The late distal tubule and the cortical collecting duct have got two major cell types which perform reabsorptive function and they are the principal cells which are involved in the reabsorption of sodium chloride and water and also involved in the secretion of potassium. It also has intercalated cells which secrete hydrogen ion and involved in the regulation of acid base balance. The principal cells uh, involved in the reabsorption of uh, sodium uh, the regulation is uh, by the aldosterone. So the rate of reabsorption of sodium is controlled by aldosterone. The sodium potassium ATPS present on the basolateral membrane maintains a low sodium inside the cell which favors the movement of sodium into the cell. So sodium potassium ATPS pump uh, maintains a low sodium concentration inside the cell and the sodium reabsorption is via the sodium channels which are called as the ENAC channels also called as the epithelial sodium channels. Sodium diffuses passively due to the chemical gradient created by the sodium potassium ATPS pump. Sodium moves out through the sodium potassium ATPS pump which is present across the basolateral membrane. The chloride reabsorption is passive via the paracellular pathway and is driven by the lumen negative charge generated by the influx of sodium. The potassium is secreted in exchange for sodium at the luminal surface and the potassium secretion into the tubular lumen involves two steps. Potassium enters the cell through the sodium potassium ATPS pump which maintains the high concentration of um, potassium intracellularly and potassium from the cell diffuses into the lumen across uh, the tubular luminal membrane down the concentration gradient. 
Now, as I said, it is regulated by the hormone aldosterone. Aldosterone um, enters the cell and binds to the intracellular receptors and alters the protein synthesis via their action on the DNA. And by this, it causes uh, increased sodium reabsorption by increasing the sodium channels on the luminal surface and also increases the sodium potassium ATPS activity and uh, increases the permeability of the luminal membrane to potassium. Thus, aldosterone increases the sodium reabsorption and increases the potassium secretion. If more potassium is secreted, there is potassium loss in the urine. Now, the principal cells in the reabsorption of sodium, the transporters can be blocked. Uh, one among them is the drugs which can block the epithelial sodium channel which is present on the luminal membrane. And this inhibits the sodium entry through the channel on the luminal membrane. Less sodium is um, transported across uh, the luminal membrane, across the basolateral membrane. So less potassium is transported into the cells, which reduces the potassium secretion into the tubular lumen. The second group of drugs which uh, compete with the aldosterone for the receptor sites, they inhibit the stimulatory effects of aldosterone on sodium reabsorption and potassium secretion. Solutes are not uh, reabsorbed, so the result is diuresis. And both these drugs uh, are potassium sparing diuretics, means it decreases the urinary excretion of potassium due to decreased potassium secretion. So they act as potassium sparing diuretics. And thank you very much for watching the video. Please subscribe to my channel, Simple Concepts in Medical Physiology for more videos.